Hey everyone, welcome back to Near Gestalt. Last time we finished off ending A, so we are gonna move on to ending B today. Or I guess I should be saying playthrough B. Mm hmm. Our save file is marked as ending A. I'm not sure what we're expecting here, but I suspect that we'll know as soon as we load this. Whenever I interacted with Kaine, I was reminded about something from my past. Maybe my mind has been confusing her with my sister this whole time. Here we go. As I understand it, we're basically going through the game again, but there will be new additional scenes. Oh, there we go. Kindness dreams. Discrimination. Oh my god, are you kidding me? The sound of rain filled the village. The steep cliffs that surrounded the area magnified sound, causing even the slightest drizzle to rattle like a thunderstorm. Thin wisps of smoke streamed from huts as the villagers huddled in their homes and waited out the rain. A single child, however, had braved the downpour and was now wandering slowly toward the wooden, hawk-shaped weather vane at the center of town. That must be Kaine. The wanderer reached the vane, which had existed for as long as any could remember, and stared. The child's face was simultaneously delicate and fierce, like a teacup that had survived the shipwreck. Those traits combined with pale white skin to give the face an almost sexless quality. That's an um, interesting way to describe something. Hmm. If the beak turns east, I go home. If it stays west, then I... I... The child blinked. Rain slowly dripped down, the young one's short hair, and began its long descent to the ground. Come on. Come on! The child felt a slight breeze and watched as the vein slowly creaked to life. Spinning this way and that for a moment, it finally settled with the beak pointing firmly toward the east. East? Really? Before the vein could move again, a jagged rock came spinning and tumbling through the air, finally striking home against the child's head. Oh, the bullying. The force of the blow dropped the child to the ground as a hail of stones began to fall all around. Oh no, they found me. A heartbreaking smile crept across the child's face as the stones continued their assault. Through the rain, the sound of multiple footsteps grew louder before a voice rang out. Yoo-hoo! Kaine! The voice belonged to Demo, worst of all the bullies in the airy. As Kaine struggled to stand, a final stone came skittering through the mud and bounced against her foot. Blood oozed from a cut above her eye and blurred her vision, but she could make out the shapes of Demo and his usual gang of idiots. The boy seemed taken aback for a moment by Kaina's seeming indifference to the blood dripping from her face, but quickly regained his bravado. What's up, freak? You like the rain? You like getting all wet? Or did you finally decide to run away from home? Though she knew it was futile, Kaina turned to leave. Before she could get more than a few steps, the other children scrambled to surround her, Cruelty burning in their eyes. Kaina knew those were not the only eyes on her. The tormentor's parents watched from the safety of their homes. She was attuned to this sensation. It was one she had experienced many times before. What? Why would even the parents condone this? What the hell? While some villagers simply turned a blind eye to the actions of their children, many encouraged it openly. In a society ruled by superstition and fear, Kaine was something to be hated, and if possible, destroyed. Mm, 
Back to the whole airy... I don't know what is up with the airy, okay? Do they already have shades in there by now? I guess not, because otherwise, why would Kaine, a half-shade, be hated? I didn't say you could leave, freak! Demo's words chewed at her like a worm through an apple. He can't hurt me, she lied to herself. Be strong. Be brave. He can't hurt me. He can't hurt me. He can't hurt... Oh look! The little freak is gonna cry! What's wrong? Are you sad that everyone hates you and wants you dead? Kaina prayed for the rain to flood down and carry her away from a world that seemed to have no place for her. But if there were gods, they chose to ignore her. As Demo crept ever closer, the clouds began to thin and the rain slowed. Even the weather hates me. I'm useless. A failure. I wish Demo's rock had taken my head off. Kaine couldn't meet Demo's leering gaze. She lowered her eyes and stared at the muddy ground below. The bully moved forward until he was inches away. She could smell the scent of old meat on his breath. The boy grabbed Kaine's face with thick fingers and yanked it upward. She tried to turn away, but he forced her gaze back and jammed his thumb against her eyelid to pry it open. You're a freak! No, I'm not. Did you just say no? Demo grinned evilly. You don't say no to me. No one says no to me. Not even taking his attention from Kaine, he called to his cohorts. Come on, guys! Let's give the freak what she deserves! As soon as Demo finished, kicks and blows begin to rain down upon Kaine. Demo paused, still grinning, as Kaine curled into a ball and tried to make the pain stop. I don't get you, freak! What you acting like a girl for, huh? Everyone knows what you really are! You're a shade, not a girl. Like that? Kaine ignored the question, choosing instead to stare at the weather vane. It continued to point east, as if supremely confident about the future it had chosen for her. Going home, not running away. Go home? Yeah, that's a funny joke for someone with dead parents and no home to go to. Where's grandma? Freak! Chanted the children. Freak! 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 Kane closed her eyes and listened to the rain, waiting for the pain to start again. As the clutching hands of the village children closed around her, she bent her mind to the sound of the rain, letting it become her world entire. The rain fell, but the pain never came. Only when the laughter of her tormentors turned to terrified cries did she dare open a single blood-caked eye. Kaine was shocked to see Demo sprawled on the ground, holding his head and screaming in pain. She could see blood welling from spaces between his fat, twisted fingers. Oh my god, he's crying. He's actually crying. Deprived of their leader, the other children glanced back and forth between themselves, as if waiting for someone to step forward and take charge. When no savior emerged, they began an uneasy shuffle away from Kaine. But the young girl was the least of their concerns. Instead, their attention was wrapped on the ancient woman standing a few feet away. After struggling for breath for a moment, she finally spoke in a voice thick with rage. Hurts like a bitch, don't it? Now I suggest you scatter before I throw another one. And if any of you little bastards ever touch my kind again, I'll do far worse than throw a rock. You can count on it. The old woman crouched down and gently touched the hand Demo was using to cover the wound. Before he could think to protest, she ground her palm into the wound and twisted back and forth. How? He screamed, leaping to his feet. Stop it! What are you doing? Quit whining! Ain't no one ever died from a scratch! You hit me with a rock, you stupid bitch! A big one! That thing could've killed me! The old woman shrugged. 
death is the best cure for stupid. Dino's face twisted with rage at her words. Locking his eyes on Kaine, he took a step backward and spat on the ground. Get out! Leave this village! No one wants you here, either of you! Seeing the old woman grab another stone, Demo and his companions turned tail and ran. As they fled, the old woman grabbed her side and barked out a single laugh. Ha! Look at the fat boy go! Guess he's healthy enough to run away from a fight! The woman's smile faded as she turned her attention to Kaine. Kneeling down, she removed her shawl and placed it around the younger girl's shoulders, then produced a cloth from the folds of her dress and began blotting at the blood on her forehead. Oh, Kaine, she said. Why didn't you fight back? You're stronger than that lot. The words of her grandmother stung Kaine, and she turned away. Why? Kaine is stronger than the children. Why would that sting? Don't be nice to me, she said. I don't deserve it. Nothing... nothing matters anymore. Her tears, held in check for so long, finally began to fall on the muddy ground below. Everyone hates me. They think I cause bad things to happen. They think I'm a freak. I wish I was dead. As Kaina's tears turned to sobs, she felt her grandmother's hands on her shoulder. Despite her advanced age and diminutive size, she was a woman of surprising strength, and Kaina found herself unable to turn away. Don't talk like that, Kaine! It's a river wide and deep that flows between the realms of this world and the next, and it grants no mercy to any that attempt the crossing. You got a duty to fight until your last breath. Understand? The old woman tightened her grip and tried to still the tremor in her voice. You know the pain of losing someone close to you, Kaine. You know, because you survived it. As the words hit home, Kaine was struck by the force of her love for the old woman. As a young child, she didn't even know her grandmother, but when her parents died, the woman quickly accepted her as her own. Grandma, as Kaine called her, was cunning, vulgar, and quick to violence, and their first few years together had not been easy. And now you know why Kaine is cunning, vulgar, and quick to violence. But with each year that passed, Kaine and her grandmother had grown closer. However, it was only now, sitting in the mud with tears and blood kicking her face, that Kaine truly understood the depths of her affection. Here was a woman who had seen hard times, who had seen death, who had fought through all these things and somehow emerged on the other side. If anyone could understand Kaine's pain and loneliness, it was her. Do... Do I make you sick, Grandma? Course not! Don't be an ass! Kaine drew her grandmother's moth-eaten shawl around her body and shuddered. But... My body... It's... It's not... Normal. If I was normal, then mom and dad wouldn't... Hush! Interrupted Grandma. I'll not hear another word of this nonsense. Wait, did we ever figure out how Kaine became a shade? Is her mom a shade? Is her dad a shade? Did she get attacked by a shade? You're my granddaughter, and I love you. And if folks have a problem with that, they can just go to hell. With that, the old woman reached out and placed a wreath of dried flowers in Kaine's hair. The skill it took to bend the flowers without breaking the stems or losing a single petal was remarkable, and the beauty of it made Kaine want to cry all over again. Lunar tear? Oh my gosh, these are lunar tears! Grandma, you made this for me? Lunar tears were legendary flowers. Most people could live their entire lives without ever seeing one. And yet, her grandmother had somehow collected a dozen or more. 
Kaine reached up and touched the wreath as if she couldn't believe it was real. Where did you find these? Oh, you know, just stumbled upon them one day while I was out doing shopping. The old woman turned away as she was explaining, leading Kaine to suspect that the search had been much more difficult than she was letting on. The pains she took to construct the ornament, let alone track down the flowers used in its construction, made Kaine's heart hurt. She reached up and gently adjusted the wreath, admiring the way it felt between her fingers. Didn't quite turn out right, said her grandmother as she squinted at it. These old hands have trouble with delicate work, but it sure looks good on a pretty girl like you. Kaine blushed and turned away. You... you think I'm pretty? Course you are! What a fool thing to say! Thank you, Grandma. Her grandmother smiled. We're gonna be fine, you and me, she said. Long as we got each other, we'll just be fine. Oh, but then we know that the grandma died because of that shade. Kaine took her grandmother's hand in hers, and the two of them struggled to their feet. As they began the long walk home, Kaine gripped the hand with all her might as if trying to stop smoke from drifting away on the wind. The rain had stopped. Kaine stood beneath the weather vane, watching it spin in lazy circles, no longer caring about the direction it faced when it stopped. I don't need to escape. I have a home now. Grandma loves me, and that's enough. Even if it's us against the world. Kaina let her gaze drift up past the vein and into the cloudy sky. The last faint hints of a rainbow were slowly fading. As she turned and headed for home, the light scattered into a million particles and vanished, seemingly taken away on the breeze. Daily Life you know, we're not even in the forest of myth anymore, so I'm going to assume that they did this because of budget reasons. This is much easier than having cutscenes and cutscenes of stuff, of course. In the distance, Kaina heard the steady sounds of an axe striking wood. The noise had a purposeful quality to it, as if she was hearing a master woodsman go about his work. The firewood being produced, however, was as far from a work of art as could be. Pieces of every shape and size were being flung about a barren yard with wild abandon. Anyone trying to stack such wood would probably die of frustration before the job was through. Stupid piece of shit axe! Kaina's grandmother flailed away with the axe, filling the air with both splinters of wood and words that would make the most hardened sailor blush. Grandma! called Kaine. What? yelled the old woman, taking her eyes off the wood for a moment. Oh, it's you, Kaine. Don't get too close, or I might take your goddamn foot off by mistake. She brought her axe down on a piece of wood, sending chips flying in every direction. One spun past Kaine close enough for her to hear the whistle, at which point she decided to step back. When she scuttled to a safe distance, she cupped her hands around her mouth and shouted, Grandma! Do you need help? I can get you water or lunch or a, a new axe or something. The axe, poised to strike another wobbly blow, paused in midair. The woman considered her granddaughter's offer for a moment, then smiled. Hmm, tell you what. Since I'm doing such a piss-poor job of chopping, why don't you come here and take over so I can get the water? Shades have been restless lately, you know, and I don't want you running into one of them bastards. Do I have to worry about that? Oh, this is probably when the grandma died. Relinquishing the axe, her grandmother picked up a long pole with wooden buckets on either end. Gathering water was by far the more difficult of the two jobs, but Kaine knew better than to complain. Once Grandma's mind was set, there was no changing it. 
Kaina did her best to help with the chores, but Grandma took every task that needed travel to the village. Though she had a long list of plausible excuses, Kaina knew the real reason. She didn't want her granddaughter to be taunted and harassed by the villagers. Once Kaina moved in, Grandma decided to take up residence a good distance away from the Yeri. Out of sight, out of mind seemed to be the best policy when it came to the villagers and her granddaughter, and rare were the days when any but the two of them would be found on the rocky acre of land they called home. Kaina enjoyed the solitude, but harbored a secret resentment that her grandmother was forced to spend her golden years in such a place. After watching her grandmother leave, Kaina turned her attention to the task at hand. She had never chopped wood before in her life, and soon discovered why the old woman hated the chore. Swing after swing of the axe produced only a tiny crack in the wood, and when she finally managed to connect with a solid stroke, the tool embedded itself in the log and refused to budge. Frustrated, Kaina swung the axe around her head and threw it, log and all, across the yard. Damn it! Damn it! Uh, crap! She suddenly understood the joy her grandmother felt in a good curse. <laughs> Happier now, she picked up the axe, forced it from the wood, and resumed chopping. She had a natural skill with a blade, but the task was challenging, and blisters soon began to form on her small pink hands. This is tough. And my logs are all weird sizes. Spitting on her palms and ignoring the pain, Kaine redoubled her efforts. Just as she was developing a rhythm, Grandma returned from the village. Setting down her buckets with a small sigh, she took one look at the logs and coughed out a wheezy laugh. Pretty clumsy, girl. You better practice if... if you... Her grandmother suddenly collapsed to her knees, causing one of the buckets to wobble precariously. Eyes wide, Kaina dropped the axe and ran to her grandmother's side. Grandma! The old woman shook her head and pointed a trembling finger at the bucket. Get... get the bucket! C can't let it spill! Kaina steadied the bucket with a foot as she knelt by her grandmother. A small bit of water sloshed over the side and made a new home in the hem of her dress, but Kaina didn't notice. Grandma! Grandma! What's happening? Crazed with panic, she grabbed her grandmother by the shoulders and shook. After a moment, the woman lifted her arms and batted Kaina away. Stop that! Just stop now! She cried, breathing heavily. It ain't like I'm dying! Just tired from the trip is all! Kaina desperately wanted to believe her, but one look at the old woman's shaking hands and worn face told her more than words ever could. Her grandmother had lived a long, hard life, and it seemed the bill was coming due. The time when her grandmother washed over Kaina was ending. Sooner than either of them had feared, the positions would be reversed. The next morning, Kaina came to the side of her grandmother's bed and took her wrinkled hand. Grandma, you're sick and you need medicine. I'm going to the village. The old woman shook her head and tried to rise, but Kaina gently pushed her down. It's all right, she said. I'll be fine. Her grandmother fixed her with a gaze that could melt steel. After what seemed an eternity, she finally lowered her eyes and sighed. Well, I don't like it, goddammit. But I guess I should quit being so stubborn and let you grow up. The old woman watched as Kaina strapped on her boots and made her way down the road to the village. Hours later, as an unseen sun made its way across a dark and rainy sky, she was still watching. Kaine moved at a brisk pace, checking her pockets every few minutes to make sure the money her grandmother gave her was still there. Every noise caused her to spin on her heels, making sure she wasn't being stalked by a shade. Or worse, Demo and his gang. Or worse. That's sad. 
but she encountered neither tormentors nor shades, and Kaine finally found herself at the entrance to the village. The few adults she could see glanced sideways at her, then muttered to each other behind raised hands before slinking away into the shadows. Her heart racing, Kaine took a series of rapid shallow breaths and tried to calm herself. I have to prove myself. I have to help Grandma. I... I have to be strong. She chanted those words to herself over and over as she slowly made her way. Finally, her eyes settled on a rotund older woman who was angrily waving her arms in the air and telling anyone who would listen exactly what she thought of Kaina's presence. Hey, lady, said Kaina with a bravado she did not feel. Where is the apothecary? The woman's flabby cheeks shook in bewildered anger. How dare this... this thing speak to me, they seemed to say. But Kaina saw her eyes held a different emotion. Fear. Yeah, we're both scared, lady. Trust me on this one. Which way? Kaina repeated. The woman pointed at a small building to her right before hitching up her dress and stumbling off into the other direction. Kaine cringed, expecting a stone to come flying from the assembled crowd, but none came. Her mind was filled with a strange sense of pride as she made her way to the apothecary. But the new emotion had little time to take root, for as soon as she opened the door, she noticed a familiar customer at the counter. It was Demo. He'd clearly been sent here on some kind of family errand, because his gang of followers was nowhere to be found. Oh my god, he sputtered. I mean, uh, what are you doing here, freak? The insult was delivered without force, and Kaina happily ignored it. Stretching on tiptoes to see over the counter, she asked the shopkeeper for the medication. Ha! barked Demo. That old bitch finally keel over? Go to hell, Demo! The boy's eyes grew so wide they seemed ready to fall out of his head. Cause that's the first time Kaina actually spoke back to him, huh? But before he could let fly a comeback, or worse, a punch, the apothecary told him to knock it off before he kicked them out of the store. Demo slunk out of the shop, cursing Kaine under his breath. Once he was gone, she allowed herself to breathe once more, taking a brief tour of the shop while the owner prepared her medication. Countless tiny bottles filled the cramped store, each with a label written in some indecipherable language. An ocean of aromas assaulted her nose, creating a scent that was exotic, but not altogether unpleasant. Seeing such a variety of supplies gave Kaine a sense of peace. Surely, in a world so vast, there would be a place she could call home. Kaine is learning that she can use fear to her advantage here. The apothecary seems to be treating her fine. On the far wall, behind the counter, rested a portrait of a stunning young girl. The picture at once contained bright, vibrant colors, but time had worked its magic, and they were beginning to fade. The beauty of the work, however, remained undiminished. You like that picture? Kinda turned to find the apothecary with a small vial of the medicine in his hand. His eyes were gentle but sad, and they seemed to stare through her and into nothing as he spoke. That's my daughter. I sketched it when she was just a little girl. She's been dead a long time now. Kaine didn't know how to respond. She just stared at the portrait and tried to come up with the right words. Pictures are wonderful things, continued the shopkeeper. They let the ones closest to you live on forever. He shook his head slightly, then looked down at Kaine and smiled. Handing her the medicine, he reached into his sizable green apron and produced a handful of old wax crayons. You should have these. There's no one left I wish to draw. Kaina took an instinctive step back, causing the shopkeeper's face to darken. Yes, I've heard the rumors about you, he said. It's a small village, and word travels quickly. 
Between you and me, I'm not sure which of them to believe, but I also don't think they matter much. I knew your grandmother Callie, and I think the way she was driven out of this town is just deplorable. Grandma's name is Callie? Thought Kaina suddenly. She was still mulling over this new fact over in her mind as she reached out and gently took the crayons from the apothecary's hands. Your grandmother is an old friend of mine, he said as Kaina scooted away yet again, and I owe her much. I'm willing to wager that she would like it if you drew a picture of her. Yes, I think she would like that very much. Kaina murmured a quiet agreement, but inside her heart was bursting. Never before had a villager treated her with anything but complete contempt. It was a tiny, almost imperceptible step, but it was a step nonetheless, and with enough tiny steps, she might one day discover the rest of the world. When Kaina returned home, she found her grandmother asleep in her bed. Her feet were blackened and raw, even bleeding a bit in places, leading Kaina to think that she had been pacing around the room until exhaustion finally caught up with her. She placed the medicine by her grandmother's pillow and turned to leave, but found the old woman's hand clasped around her arm. Back already, are you? asked her grandmother with a yawn. Come here, let me have a look at you. Grandma sat up and examined Kaina from head to toe, finally satisfied that nothing terrible had befallen her grandchild. She leaned back and allowed herself to relax. Well, how was it? Did those bastards give you any trouble? It was kind of fun, said Kaina with a small smile. No, seriously, it was. It was fun, was it? asked her grandmother in a voice which implied she believed anything but. Uh-huh, so anytime you need me to run an errand, just let me know. As she spoke, Kaina removed the crayons from her pocket. After a brief explanation of their source, she informed her grandmother that she was going to sketch her portrait. A portrait of me? Ridiculous. No one wants to stare at a wrinkled old crone. But grandma, it'll make you live forever. Horse manure, said her grandmother, throwing back the sheet from her bed. Living forever would just piss me off. Now put those crayons away and help me with dinner. But Kaina would not relent, and in the end, Grandma found herself leaning against the wall of their house as if posing for a master artist. Kaina took up the crayons and eyed her subject carefully. Just as her grandmother was about to nod off, Kaina finished the work. After staring at it for a bit, she released it from her grip and let it slowly drift to the floor. It's terrible. It doesn't look anything like you at all. I'm sorry, Grandma. I thought these crayons would, you know, make drawing easy or something. Yeah, it's what I thought would happen. <laughs> it's not like you actually had practiced before. The old woman's eyes narrowed at her granddaughter's disappointment. Let me be the judge of that, she said, ignoring the pain in her back and reaching for the paper. The sketch could have been a person's face. It also could have been a boulder, a lump of clay, or an incredibly mishappened loaf of bread, all rendered in a chaotic array of colors. The old woman stared at the picture for a long time, then slowly wheezed out a laugh. Oh, Kaine, she said between laughter. You truly are my blood. You're as clumsy as me, and I love it. But... Hush. I won't hear any more bull about how ugly you think it is. It came from the heart, and I'll treasure it always. True to her word, the old woman gave the picture a place of honor above the kitchen table. In the days that followed, Kaine would often catch her staring at the portrait with a strange smile on her face, an action she interpreted as silent, mocking laughter. A week later, Kaine could stand it no more and asked her grandmother to take the artwork down. Posh, said the old woman, I'll take this down when they roll me in my shroud. She pondered this for a bit, then turned to Kaina and dropped to one knee. Listen to me, girl. Seeing this picture makes me happy in a way I've never felt before. 
and it makes me want to go on so that someday you can feel the same happiness. It was a moment that burned itself in Kaina's memory, a perfect blend of pride and joy and love that came together to form a lifelong remembrance. She swore to never forget this moment, to never forget the old woman who had made her place in the world possible. Time moves on. People and memories come in and out of a life like ghosts passing through a hall. But this moment will be different, Kaina swore, because I will remember it forever. Forever.